Right now, my brother is playing a small video game with nothing but his mind. That's right, no controllers, no hands, no feet. Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. In this video, we're excited to share with you our journey making mind-controlled experiences. How is this done? Well, we used the Unity game engine and some innovative technology called Nixed Minds. It's a minimalist sensor which you strap onto the back of your head and which can read your visual focus. So you can use that to control the game world. For example, here my brother is focusing his attention on this falling hazard. And boom, destroys. If you're as intrigued as we were, then join us as we explain how we created three small mind-controlled prototypes. First of all, we needed to calibrate the sensor to our brain. This was done by staring at a small triangle for almost a minute. This went quite smoothly for Liam, who usually got top marks, whereas the sensor struggles to detect my brain, probably because of my thicker hair. Thankfully, after some tweaking, we eventually got it to work on both of us. Note that this is a dev kit and is still undergoing changes. It's a futuristic gem which isn't perfect, but we're very glad to have had the opportunity to give it a go. Before attempting to create our own games, we had access to a few demos, and we were quite impressed and excited. For example, here Liam is switching channels with his mind, and this platformer mixes both physical controller inputs and psychic Nixed Mind powers. The player can move blocks and destroy enemies without moving an inch. Pumped by these discoveries, we jumped into Unity, which is the tool we use to create our video games. We had to download and import the NixMind SDK, which would integrate all the functionalities we needed. Turns out, making a mind-controlled game was far easier than expected. So we've set up a cute example scene with a creature meditating. If we click on this blue circle, the creature changes. Now let's try and make this work with Nixed Minds. All we need is a neural manager in the scene and add a neural tag component to all objects we wish to be mind interactable. In other words, once the object has been properly focused on, we can call a function from our scripts. So I have a script called change character. I drag and drop that into this empty slot and call the change function. The initial experience of playing a game with no hands was pretty exhilarating. It typically took us two to three seconds to focus and bam, a mind interaction. We weren't sure if thinking about something else while staring at an object would count. Turns out it does. So you can think about your mum, your shopping list, a bowl of oats, while looking at something in the scene. It does not read your thoughts, which is a relief. It was then time to create our second mini experiment. Sparky, Sparky, boom. An iconic avatar character is the assassin who can blow things up with his mind. It's one of the first things I thought about when I discovered Nixed Minds. So you've got to blow up these falling blobs with your unwavering gaze. I enjoyed drawing in Photoshop, animating little characters, making particle effects using Unity's particle system. The game dev process with Nixed Mind is mostly the same as without. It mostly differs in how you call functions and the way you design your worlds. Since focusing takes quite some time, this encourages slower spawn rates and movement. Now, some of you may be asking yourselves how this sensor differs from an eye tracker. And simply put, from what I've understood, an eye tracker takes into account a flat surface, while Nick's mind also reads depth. I may be staring in the direction of an object in my scene, but if I'm not concentrated on it, but I'm instead straining my eyes on this pen, it's a no-go. By the way, the music you can hear was made by Milan Svenkara, the same composer we collaborated with on our last tiny video game, Squabbles. Thanks so much for these great pieces and the help. Now, saying that the Nick's Mind game creation process was a piece of cake wouldn't be completely true. Our main struggle came from connecting the device which would sometimes stubbornly refuse to turn green. Thankfully, we didn't always need to calibrate the sensor. We could simulate focus with simple mouse clicks, which was a nice time saver. We also want to thank the NixMind team for providing this dev kit for free and being available to answer our questions and help solve problems. For example, we wanted to provide the player with more feedback when trying to focus on an object something more than this simple flicker. So we went on a call and quickly received some great answers, giving us the ability to add this rotating symbol around hazards, which confirms that the player is going through that whole focus process. And now it was time for a third Nix Mind experiment. 
to recreate an extremely simplified and tiny version of Dashing Fire, my second Steam game, which I created last year. Again, no hands, just be able to play with the mines. If you don't know, in Dashing Fire, you control a little character who can dash between small, randomly generated worlds, avoiding enemies, collecting powers, and defeating colorful bosses. For this tiny demo, I'll get the dash working and add some enemies to avoid. I'll also put into place the core mechanic of turning orange. So when you collide with a sun, you turn orange, and so you can destroy enemies without taking damage. However, once you've done so, you turn back to white. And soon enough, my brother was playing a tiny version of Dashing Fire without hands, which was pretty awesome. Again, it takes a few seconds to focus on a move spot, so after the initial thrill, it can get a little tedious. And I wouldn't say Dashing Fire is made better without hands. If you want to play the original Dashing Fire with hands has a requirement, you can play on Steam with the link in the description. Now we did realize that although Nick's Mind might not greatly improve the gameplay experience, it can make playing a lot more accessible, since all you need is eyesight and a brain, and that's a big plus. Okay, we hope you enjoy this first video of 2021. We're really excited for this new year, there's lots of great things to come. Remember that if you're interested in learning how to create your own video games, we've made four courses available on Udemy. One will teach you how to make a little strategy game, another shows you how to create a top-down shooter or a platformer adventure. There's also a course aimed at complete beginners who have never touched programming, the Unity game engine, and have never attempted making their own game art. The links to these tutorials are in the description. And with that said, as you wait on new Blackthorn Prod videos to come out, you can browse through our, our large library of videos full of making offs, devlogs, and tutorials. So we hope you find something to enjoy, and see you soon.